Hi everybody, Broken Eves, and welcome to today's video. Thank you to everybody for your continued support. I've had a request for some uh, virtual boxing information. So today I'm going to start the virtual boxing off. So first of all, I'm using virtual box. If you want to use virtual box and you are on Zorin OS, just go to your software store. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And type in VirtualBox and it should come straight up. You'll see that on Zorin OS Lite it is actually an apt package. So it's straight out of the Ubuntu repositories. Bring it down and install it. Once it's installed, open it up, run it. And the next thing that you need to do is specify where you want the virtual boxes to be stored. Please make sure you have plenty of hard drive or SSD space to do this. Go ahead and create a folder. Once you've done that, click on File, Preferences, and select where you want your virtual boxes to be stored. I've gone for slash MNT boxes slash VB. Yours will be in a different path to that but select the correct path of where you want the virtual boxes stored. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our first virtual box. I'm going to create a Mint 22 virtual box. Uh, it is Linux, it is Ubuntu. Well done, virtual box. You got that bit right. The next thing I'm going to do is give it 8 gigabytes of RAM. 4 gigabytes is fine if you've only got 8 gigabytes on your system. But bear in mind, the less system resources you have, the slower the virtual box is going to run. OK, next we need to create a physical hard drive. So I'm go I always give my virtual boxes 30 gigs. <clears throat> it's your choice. You can give it whatever size you like. There's no right or wrong. Obviously, you need the minimum. I would suggest the minimum is 12 gigs on any OS but some OSs do demand a lot more. Go ahead and create it, and there's your virtual box. Once you've created it, before you start it up, right-click it and left-click Settings. Go to System, Processor, and I like to give mine four cores, quad-core. And then on your display, if you don't have a quad-core, dual-core is fine. Again, just bear in mind, the, the least amount of resources you give it will result in the box running slower. I then like to max the video RAM and enable 3D acceleration. That's it. You need to touch anything else. You can click OK. Go ahead and click your Start button. Start your virtual box up. OK, click on this little folder icon here. Left click Add. And then left click your Linux Mint. Or whatever distribution ISO you're using. Click Choose and click Start. And now we can minimise the parent window down. And there's our Linux Mint. So we can start Linux Mint up. This is Linux Mint 22, which has just been released. Now, once it's um, booted, I'm going to match the resolution to my monitor and then go full screen. And I'll show you how to do that and how to get back out of full screen. There's two simple ways of doing it. Uh, error seems to be un unsupported hypervisor. No, that's all right. It's going to boot. Uh, sometimes with VirtualBox... Uh, distros uh, can be a little bit mm, flaky, I guess is the word to use. Most of the time, they're fine, they're rock solid, they work beautiful. But sometimes they can be a little bit flaky. And again, it depends a lot on your hardware configuration as well. So do bear that in mind. Okay, so here we are. So as you can see, we're on the Linux Mint. And mm, the desktop resolution is incorrect. So I'm going to go to Preferences, go to Display. Uh, okay, it's on 1280 by 800. I want 1280 by 720. Apply. Thank you. Keep the new configuration. There we go. Okay, so 
Now to switch to full screen, we can either go view and full screen, which is also host and F. Your host key is your right control key. Do not show that again. And it should tell you here. Note that the host key is currently defined as right control. You can remap that to any key you want, but the default is right control. So let's go into full screen. There we go. So if I now press and hold down my right control and press F, it goes back into windowed mode. Press it again, full screen. Now you also have this bar across the bottom, um, which you can pin, uh, and you can use these little icons here to minimize or unmaximize. So if I click that, as you can see, it's unmaximized. If I go back into it, it's now full screen. Okay, so I don't know what else I can show you about VirtualBox. That's about it. Uh, you don't need to mess about with any other of the settings. Just make sure that you're giving it enough cores, enough RAM, and enough hard drive space to do the job. And you should be good to go. It shouldn't give you any hassles. Um, one of the reasons I love VirtualBox so much is it's very straightforward intuitive and reliable let's go ahead and try and do uh, an install i'm going to select english uk on the linux mint 22 <coughs> excuse me uh yeah i want to install the multimedia codex yes please right off the bat continue now Bear in mind that because it is a virtual box and it's not bare metal, um, it's not going to give you any idea as to hardware compatibility. It's not going to give you any idea as to the true speed of the system. Uh, and it's certainly not going to give you any idea as to, yep, erase the disk, as to how well games and other applications are going to run on the system. This really is just a way of having a look around an operating system and playing with it. Um, other than that, it's virtually useless. Super secret password, type that in. Uh, log in automatically as it's a virtual box. But it's a great way of running many different operating systems without forever having to um, install operating systems or use a utility like Ventoy or something like that. It's a great way of just loading stuff on really quick, checking it out. <clears throat> and it's also a great way of using Linux, safe in the knowledge that if you bust the virtual box completely, well, A, you can make a backup of it before you start, so it's very easy to restore. Uh, and secondly, if you do go and break it, it's a virtual box. It's not real life with all your personal stuff on it and you know all them hours of hard graft and work you've put into your operating system bang it's gone with a virtual box that's not the case so virtual box does have some superb uses and as i say it's great for looking around stuff however if you're gonna do distro reviews using virtual box you need to make it crystal clear at the start of your video or live stream that you are using VirtualBox um, <clears throat> because as I say there'll be a lot of key elements that you will have no clue about including as I say hardware compatibility speed um, app compatibility gaming compatibility there's a lot of stuff you can't do with VirtualBox or I'm not even going to say you can't do it's not ideal to do and a lot of people who watch distro review videos um, I think do prefer it to be on bare metal. So do bear that in mind. Um, but VirtualBox for me is too useful to not be used. So I want to start doing um, a look at various different, well, there's, there's a gazillion distros. I'm never going to run out of distros to uh, slap in a VirtualBox and play with. However, for Linux Mint 22, for argument's sake, 
running it in a virtual box is great. It allows me to break it and have a play with it and faff around with it. That's fine. But I'm never going to really get a true feel for how it's going to be on my hardware. So as long as you're clear and focused as to the strengths and weaknesses of VirtualBox, you'll be absolutely dandy. Um, if any of you have got any questions on VirtualBox, please post them underneath the video. Bear in mind, I am a Linux user. I'm a bit of a noob. Uh, I'm not a guru or an expert. Um, <clears throat> so do feel free um, to post as much information about any questions or issues you may have. As I've said in a previous video, you know, the more information you can give me, the more likely it is I'll find the correct solution to your issue or question. We'll just let this finish copying the files and then set up. Uh, as I say, it shouldn't take too long. You can run, obviously, other stuff while you're doing this. It doesn't help that actually I'm installing and bringing a game down at the same time. Uh, but fortunately, that's on a different SSD. Um, so, please bear that in mind. <coughs> uh, it could be a bit quicker. Hmm. Okay, sorry, I was, <clears throat> hmm. well, that's a bit bizarre. Okay, fine. <clears throat> uh, so I hope you're going to enjoy this series. Um, I am going to be looking around an awful lot of the distros. I'm just going to go through them um, in no particular order. Um, there'll be kind of two parts uh, to each distribution. There'll be the installation, uh, because there are still installation issues that a lot of people don't know about until they come to install the distro and how to fix it. It also op opens up the opportunity for us to explore some of the more obscure distros. Um, what do I mean by obscure? I mean the Gen 2 Linux from scratch, OpenSUSE, Fedora. In my mind, they're the more obscure. They're not mainstream. They're more... It's not obscure. It's specialist. Specialist is a much better word. So it'll give us the opportunity... <coughs> excuse me. To really look around some of these distributions uh, and see what they're all about and what's going on under the hood. Have a look at the package managers, have a look at what software is available for them, etc. So, <clears throat> I'm very much looking forward to this. Um, to use VirtualBox's simplicity itself, and any PC powerful enough, mine's a 6 core 12 thread with 16 gigs of RAM and 3 SSDs in, so it's quite easy for me to run basic 8 gigabyte virtual boxes and it should be the same for you <clears throat> if you've got more resources than that then you can give your virtual box more resources and your virtual box will run a lot lot faster so if you if you've only got 8 gig of ram for argument's sake and you can you can still quite comfortably do 4 gigabyte virtual boxes just bear in mind it will run pretty slow and that's not a reflection on the distribution, but more of a reflection on what hardware you're running. Um, and you may also run into hardware issues as well. Um, display issues with NVIDIA. Don't forget, I'm using AMD Raiden. I do have a an NVIDIA RTX 3050 uh, graphics card here. But I've taken it out this PC and put the 
RX 580 in um, because it's just perfect for all Linux distros as the AMD drivers are baked and built into the kernel. I don't need NVIDIA Software Settings Manager. I don't need NVIDIA Profile Inspector or anything like that. The only downside with the AMD raiding cards is the AMD software, to the best of my knowledge, uh, is not available for Linux because both NVIDIA Profile Inspector and uh, the AMD software are built and designed for use with Windows APIs only. It's not that you can't run them on Linux, it's just that the uh, the stuff that those software packages rely on just don't exist in Linux. So there's no point running the software. It's a bit like having a performance tuning piece of software for a jet engine and you're running a diesel. <laughs> It's just pointless. Uh, that's the, I think that's the only um, downside and deficiency of um, all graphics cards, really, because they've been kind of built and designed from the ground up to work with Windows. When it comes to port, porting them over to Linux, you can port certain elements of the drivers and... Uh, you can utilise the hardware to the full. What you can't do is utilise what's not there in the first place. And as I say, with Windows, you've got a lot of Windows APIs that are linked to both the AMD and NVIDIA. And you just can't run them on Linux. It's that simple. It's not even an option. It's not that the software won't run. But as I say, the APIs are not physically there for the software to call. So uh, it's pointless. But apart from that, uh, I'm very, very happy. Oh, Farm Simulator 22 is down already. That's amazing. That was another comment that somebody posted. Apparently, I seriously need Farm Simulator 22. Well, as you all know, I've got them all from 13, 15, 17, 19, and 22. <coughs> I've never been able to warm myself to 22 15 is my baby i love 17 i dislike 19 and dislike 22 but hey i'll give 22 a whirl out on this machine and see how i get on with it um we're just waiting for this to finish installing uh, and then we'll reboot it we'll set the resolution and just check that everything's working okay and then we'll be ready for the next video to have a look round linux mint 22 cinnamon edition uh and see why it's such a gorgeous windows killer uh because i think linux mint zorin os oh there's a mx linux there's, there's a few distros that are absolute window crushers um for most people not for everybody but for most people um and i'm guessing Doing some of these um, distro first looks, whatever you want to call them. Um, mm, distro examinations. <laughs> I have to get me thinking cap on. You have to be very careful how you word things on the internet. Because the trolls come out uh, in force. <clears throat> so uh, I'll have a think on that. Uh, but hopefully you'll all enjoy this series uh, with this virtual boxing. This will run alongside the other Linux content um, and the gaming. This will very quickly become the main playlist, as I've done for the last 15 years under various different names. Um, and we have many interesting things to discover. <clears throat> I'm sure you lot has got much to teach me as I have to teach you. My biggest problem is information retention. Um, since I've had my stroke, I can't remember what knickers I had on yesterday. Uh, never mind what I did three weeks ago. Uh, so I'm going to have to lean on you guys and girls um, to point stuff out and correct me. So if I repeat something or say something completely opposite to what I said last week, do feel free to fill your boots down in the comments. That's what they're there for. Uh, and I'll do my best to answer all of the comments. Uh, 
and reply to as many of your comments as you can. So there you go. So hopefully, as I say, we're now configuring the hardware. Hopefully you'll all enjoy the series. And if nothing else, uh, whilst I'm looking around them, uh, you won't have to. <laughs> and if you see something you like, then it might just be worth your while downloading it. Burn it to a USB thumb drive and boot your PC off the USB thumb drive. And that way it gives you a chance to check your hardware compatibility. Right, I'll just let this finish installing. I'll be right back. Sorry about that all, and we're back. So we're just waiting for this installation to finish. It's good for you guys and girls to see it uh, in real time. Um, some might say, oh, it's pretty boring sitting here watching a virtual box install. Uh, but also, it's 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 a it will be a useful reference source for people doing live real installs themselves. They can always check what the installation process should be like. Um, obviously, if you just download an ISO, burn it to USB, plug it in your computer, boot it and start the install, you don't know if that install is how it's supposed to be. Uh, so you could always use these videos as a reference for installing stuff yourself, which is really, really useful, which I've done myself in the past, especially on um, more complex or unique Linux distribution installs where stuff is not what I would call uh, standard. Uh, stuff like Puppy Linux or Gen 2 or Linux from scratch or stuff like that where it's not, you know, you're not using Ubiquiti, you're not using Calamaris, uh, there is no sudo apt install, uh, stuff's a bit different. I'm deliberately leaving Arch out of it because Arch is becoming more mainstream. Um, it's not, uh, I don't personally put Arch in the same category anymore as Gen 2 and Linux from scratch, whereas Arch, Gen 2 and LFS used to be their own little elite category. Hmm. Not so much these days. Okay, left click the restart now. Let's let the box reboot. Now, it depends on the distro. Some distros will auto remove the CD image, some will not. Some you'll have to remove it yourself. So if we press enter, <coughs> we'll let it reboot, there it goes. Don't forget, I'm only using a cheap Chinese RX 580. Um, I'm not using one of the blue chip brands. It's a, I think it's a Zing Shui, uh, but it's been fantastic. And it's one of the 2048 SP ones as well. Uh, so it's got a kind of, if you like, cut down memory bus on it, uh, which is fine. It really doesn't make that much difference. Um, you know, okay, so the first thing I want to do is go to preferences and display. Oh, 
come on. Don't tell me my mouse is going to go. My wireless mouse. There we go. Uh, uh, the virtual machine reports guess where supports mouse pointer integration. Good. Good. Kill him. Kill him now. Uh, I'm going to control an effort. There we go. Uh, and I want to save it as 1280 by 720. Now I'll control F in the full screen so that I can apply. Keep new configuration. It did let go of the mouse pointer, uh, which is a bit bizarre, but anyway. Um, okay, so we've applied that. Um, I'm going to save all this for the next boot. So there you go, everybody. Um, Linux Mint 22. Oh. Fully installed in a virtual box. Up and running. Beautiful. So these are the Wilmer wallpapers, which I assume are the wallpapers for this distribution release. Very, very nice they look too. Uh, so we'll go with the abstract for now. There you go. So um, please don't forget to post any questions you may have underneath the video. I hope this first kind of introductory uh, virtual box session has helped you out and hopefully given you the confidence that you need to go ahead and start your virtual box journey. Um, Thank you all so much for your support. Much, much love to each and every one of you. Uh, please rate, comment, subscribe. Thumb the videos up if you loved it. Down if you hated it. I will see you for another wicked Broken Ebes video.